trying to take the, the subject matter here down to a completely different level where personally Zurich and I uh, feel that the risk manager has a very key part to play in probably what is one of the most traumatic, uh, intensive and um, uh, um, somewhat uh, dangerous exercises that uh, corporations and organisations can undertake and uh, executives within those organisations. I myself have a 15 year history in transactions. Um, I come from a banking and financial services background. Very quickly, what I'd like to do is I'd like to start off with some market context because I think that sets the scene uh, for our discussion. I'd like to allude to uh, some of the um, aspects of transactions that I've experienced over the last 15 years and how the uh, level of complexity and sophistication has increased especially through the due diligence process uh, and how really from that the risk management role has emerged and we're seeing continues to emerge as a, as a key enabler to transactions uh, as well as the emerging roles for advisors and brokers within that space as well as insurance companies. And lastly, at that point I'm going to hand over to Jared. What we'd like to try and do is give you some practical examples of where we are working on or have worked on some transactions that maybe you know would stimulate some debate or conversation and if we have time later on we can maybe take some questions. To give you some idea of context, I thought we'd talk about the Italian market, which I thought would be appropriate, but globally um, we saw last year $4.9 trillion of transactions uh, which were announced in 2007. Last point here is really there are no real surprises. Finance generally, globally, wherever I look, uh, tends to be the primary market for uh, announced size by volume uh, and, and, and actually uh, value. Uh, but also we see uh, some consumer goods and real estate property and automotive uh, following on as the largest sector. <coughs> this is rather a busy slide and I apologise, I thought this was going to build, but I think there are 10 key points I'd like to bring out here. Is We shouldn't underestimate uh, the impact that financial buyers, private equity and uh, large investment banks have had on the market. I think they brought a, um, an awareness uh, and the need for um, acquisitions to be accretive and value uh, enhancing. And I think in that is, is created the need to understand uh, and be aware of the value uh, that is created through a transaction. Um, I think there is clearly now an accepted correlation between the synergy that is built into the acquisition business case, which is why you should be doing it, or divestment business case and actually how that impacts our shareholders. More importantly, from this audience perspective, is, is that today people are looking at risk more and more, um, and it's becoming transparent with the emerging financial sponsors, but also within the corporate environment, as to what the appetites are, are, are from the perspective of, of um, uh, from a both a financial and an operational perspective, when people go into a transaction. And let's be, be, be frank, decision makers want to know what are my financial commitments here? What are my financial exposures, not only in the transaction, but also in the business I'm buying or divesting, but also what are my operational exposures? In doing that, what we've seen is an incremental sophistication of the uh, transaction process. And in, in, in doing that, we see greater due diligence undertaken. Uh, we're seeing professionalization of the MA approach within corporates. Again, I think this has been, <coughs> having come from a corporate transactions background, stimulated by um, the, uh, uh, the emergence of private equity who are supporting the professionalisation of the M&A approach. I think the other thing that we used to consider when I was doing deals or transacting uh, within the, the organisation I was working with was that the cost of undertaking a transaction was substantially increased. If we look at the transaction process, and again I, I, I've broken this down into uh, the Key, what we would see as the key four stages. Um, if you were to see the grey box area as where uh, confidentiality from a transaction process would be uh, in place, you have the corporate development team who would be running and should be running that transaction process in there from sort of start to finish would be, uh, we would see the investment bankers, your lawyers and your accountants and tax advisors. And as I mentioned earlier, the integration consultants coming very early on into the due diligence phase uh, providing that kind of upfront view on what the future state of the organisation will look like. But more and more, uh, over the 15 years that I've been operating in this space, 
I've seen risk management coming to the fore. And I'll give you a case in point. When I started, um, I had a request for information that we put out as a standard, um, if, you, if you like, spreadsheet for what did we need to see when we bought a bank. And it had three and a half thousand lines on it. So being banking, there were lots of things around risk management and financial risk. There were three lines regarding operational risk. And those three lines were, do you have insurance? What is it? And what are the policy numbers? So out of 3,000 lines, we had three lines that actually the risk manager, rather than the risk director in the bank I operated in, actually had input into an insurance risk manager. What we've seen is an incremental that sophistication, as we talked about earlier, we're seeing about the risk manager now having not only to manage his own team in an acquisition in the due diligence process, but also a plethora of advisors, operational risk consultants, environmental consultants if appropriate, some of the risk engineering aspects, and then engaging risk advisors and insurance brokers. But more importantly, if we look at the right-hand side, is, is there are certain drop-dead dates where the risk manager needs to be able to provide advice and have solutions in place, and they don't move. Yeah. Uh, the more and more we look at the risk manager and risk management being a value-adding uh, function uh, in this process, the more that solutions box, and the reason those solutions box need to be, be, be in place become more and more important. 